today I want to talk to you about I buying. And I'm going to explain what I buying is. I'm going to explain some of the pros, some of the cons. And uh, full disclosure, I'm a real estate professional. I have been for 16 years. I've been a part of over 3,500 transactions. So I definitely have an opinion and I'm probably biased. All right, with all that out of the way, let's dive into it. So first of all, I'm screen recording here and you can see that there's this article in the background of uh, the, the Vice article written on iBuying. It's, I'm gonna reference this on a couple different occasions, so that's why I have it up here, and I put it in the description uh, below, so you can go read it yourself. I think it's, I actually think it's done pretty well. They have a pretty fair and balanced view of iBuying. Uh, they, they post you know some of the pros to the people who are participating into it. Um, they also post uh, uh, some of the you know, studies, independent studies that have been done that maybe contradict some of the statements by the major companies. So, all right, without further ado, that's the breakdown. We're diving in right now. So, first of all, what is iBuying? So, iBuying just stands for instant buyer or instant offer. Uh, so, companies like Zillow, Open Door, even Rocket Mortgage is now starting to get into this, and there's a plethora of other companies that have been doing this. In fact, this has been done for you know, as long as I've been in the business, there's been instant offer options out there. You've probably seen signs uh, on telephone poles in your city or area that say, we buy houses cash fast, you know, no commissions, no BS, no open houses, blah, blah, blah. So this is not a new thing. Uh, what it is, though, is, you know, the new part about it is these large tech companies are, you know, basically arming themselves with war chest of money to be able to buy homes quickly and then sell them for, you know, eventually a profit. Right now they're not profitable, but that is the plan. Um, so uh, I buying, all it means is instant offer. That's all you really need to know. Uh, they just call it I buying for short. So let's go over some of the uh, pros. Really, there's two pros that stick out to me. There's, there's a lot of pros to it. Obviously, you get to sell your house. Um, but, but the two pros that stick out to me versus a traditional sale where you might hire a real estate professional to help you. Number one is you uh, don't have to show your home to anyone. They will use some computer algorithms, um, run some numbers in the area, make you an offer on your property. You don't have to show it to anyone. Now, you, that's not 100% true because there will be home inspections and people will see it to make sure it's not on fire or it doesn't smell funny or whatever. Um, you know, so the no showings part is a huge convenience. The other part is because these are investors, they are, um, in a position where they can allow you to close whenever you want. So, you know, if you need to sell your home today, um, and, and you want to move out next week, great. You want to move out in, you know, six months, I, I, they can negotiate that for you too. So they are willing to work with you on that move out date. Those are probably the biggest two convenience factors. Um, and I guess you could maybe argue that you have to deal with less people. You're still going to have to deal with someone, you know, giving you that offer. You're still going to have to figure out all the questions on lots and lots and lots of different pieces. But from what I can see, those are the biggest two advantages for you to choose an instant offer. You get an offer right away. You don't have to show it to anyone. And of course, uh, you know, you can move out whenever you want. Now, the cons list, and again, I told you I'm biased, is maybe a little bit longer. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's look at you know the big piece I, I said earlier, those yellow signs you've seen in your city, no commissions, no BS. Well, why would they buy your house cash? You know, There's hundreds and thousands of homes on the market in the MLS. Why don't they go buy those houses? Well, if you're thinking, you might be like, well, maybe they're trying to make money off me. While they maybe aren't charging a commission, they might be charging some sort of convenience fee or something else that's causing uh, them to make some money. Well, for iBuyers, they charge a convenience fee. Now, in this article, it's actually referenced um, a couple different ways that, uh, the, let's see, their convenience fee is basically for Open Door and Zillow from what they tell us, their information to us, is it's somewhere between 5 and 8%. Now Zillow says that they're, uh, you know, that's open doors, and Zillow says that their repairs average about ten grand. Now they're going to charge you for those repairs, right? 
Um, so, you know, what's, if you're saving that commission, what's, if, you know, do you want your realtor to just call the commission a convenience fee uh, to make you feel better? Because that's basically what they're doing here. They're making money in some way, right? You've got to understand that. Now, right now, these uh, iBuying programs are not actually making money. They're, they're purchasing homes, even with these discounts, they're not profitable. They're making gross profits, but not net because of their costs associated with the programs. Um, the other thing on the convenience fee part is just, you know, there's some independent studies in this uh, article, which I, you know, strongly encourage you to read. Um, it says somewhere between 11 and 15% is what those fees actually end up being once you factor in all the stuff associated with it. So there's one downside. You're going to have to pay a convenience fee. So if you're thinking you're saving a commission because those realtors are making way too much money, um, well, you know, you're going to pay a convenience fee. So you're just calling it something different. The other thing is the inspection negotiation period. Now you have an iBuyer come in and they say, oh, all this stuff's wrong. You're going to have to pay X, Y, and Z. Well, you don't have anyone negotiating for you. And if you haven't bought and sold in you know, hundreds and thousands of homes, uh, you might not know what is supposed to happen and what's not supposed to happen. What is typical for a seller to fix for a buyer? Um, and if you don't have anyone in your court, you know, and Zillow who's buying, uh, I don't know, five to 10,000 homes per quarter, uh, do you think they know what they're doing when it comes to negotiating inspections? Probably. They probably are a little bit savvier than the average person they're buying the home from. So, you got a convenience fee. You're also going to get negotiated or, or dinged or beat up on your home inspection. Uh, some of the other things, you know, typically in, or particularly in the last few years, you know, it's it's summer of 2021 as I'm recording this right now uh, in August. And, uh, you know, for the last few years, we've been able to create bidding wars on our sellers' homes. We find their home. We price it right. We market it right. And we are able to create bidding wars for them. Well, how can you get a bidding war if you only have one offer? It's just not going to happen. So, uh, you know, that's another thing you need to take into consideration is you, you can't really find out the market value if you never go to the market. So while they're saying they're charging a 5 to 8% convenience fee and independent studies are saying that it's somewhere closer to 10 to 15%, uh, one thing they're leaving out of the equation is, are you actually getting market value? So please do me a favor. Even if you hey, despise realtors and commissions and all that stuff, and you never want to uh, help uh, or hire one of them to help you sell, sell your home, do yourself a favor. Before you accept one of these iBuyer offers, these instant offers, get a great, highly recommended real estate professional to give you a second opinion. Tell you what they think your home's worth. In fact, I've heard stories of, of in some rare instances where realtors have been like, man, I, I don't think I can sell your home for that. Go ahead and accept that offer. Uh, at least you'll be, be able to sleep at night a little bit better. Um, and, and I guess the uh, two, two, more, two more things I, I would point out on the, you know, me being biased, of course, as I've already mentioned, uh, that, that are a little bit of downsides to this program. Um, you know, you don't really know if you're getting fair market value because you never go to the market. Already mentioned that, but how do they sell your home? Because because they they're not in the business of just buying your home and holding it forever. In this article, it actually says they're making you know in some cases thirty nine thousand uh, dollars. Let me see if I can find it here. Pardon me. Uh, even just after a few days, they're making thirty nine thousand dollars on the sale of a home and how, oh, here you go. Uh, on the resale, $39,000. How can they make $39,000 after holding a home for just a few days if they gave you a fair market offer? Probably, probably not giving you a fair market offer or your home was in such demand that so many people wanted to buy it when they went to sell it. And this is the smoking gun, in my opinion, for the iBuyer program. How do they sell your home? Well, they list it with a real estate professional so they can get the most amount of money. So if they're coming in, a billion, multi-billion dollar tech companies coming in to buy your house and saying, this is the best way to sell, and then they go sell it with a real estate professional, you, you might want to slow down and, and think a little bit about what they're doing and is it in your best interest? Um, I kind of liken it to like a, a pawn shop type scenario. I mean, obviously, if you go to sell something in a pawn shop, you don't expect to get the most money, but it's convenient and you can be done with it and don't have to deal with people. 
Um, but then when they go to resell it, they're putting it on the store and marketing it and charging more money, you know, just like they would with your house. So that's all I've got for this video today on iBuying. I strongly encourage you to read this uh, article. I think it's actually well written and you can find out quite a bit about it. Um, this is the future of, uh, of real estate, you know, and they aren't making money right now, which is fascinating because uh, the real estate values are increasing so much. Um, it's just kind of blows me away that they're not, <laughs> not profitable. If they can't be profitable in this real estate market, I don't know exactly what profit will look like. The only thing I could think of is if enough people adopt this program, then they can take those, you know, five to 8% fees that they say they charge and they can bump those up to 10 to 15 to 20%. Um, and at that point, they'll start making money because that's usually what they need. They need mass adoption. Once they get mass adoption, then they can start to adjust the price and make profit. Uh, so again, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'm Chase Craig with Own Boise at Keller Williams Realty Boise. And if you want to look at our monthly market updates for the Boise area, go ahead and check out the description for a link to that as well. Thanks. Have a great day.